So I'm really excited to share with you that I finally finished the whole patio in my back garden and it was this last bit that I needed to do in front of the garage which I shared with you how I had to break up loads of concrete in my DIY gravel video and I'd already done the main part of it in August using sand so I'll leave a link to those videos below but that's a little bit of a backstory about this area but I did have an epic fail that I had to overcome so uh, yeah I thought I'm probably best sharing it with you in case you face the same issue so keep on watching if you want to see how I did it so the first job I had to do was secure this railway sleeper and the plan was to use it to retain the gravel on one side but also I didn't want it to move and knock the future patio I'd previously cut a notch out with the tennis saw, treated it just so it would fit snug next to my fencing's concrete post. And I lined it up with a builder square just to make sure it was straight. And I also wanted to pin it with some railway pins so it didn't do any damage. So I had to pull back all the gravel and hardcore underneath. I do regret not separating them in buckets because they did merge a bit. And once I'd cleared anything in the way, I made sure it was in line with the house again and then malleted down my road pins and screwed them to the sleeper. Don't worry if you don't know where to get them, I'll leave all the links to the things that we've bought below. And then I'm not embarrassed enough to hold back a huge mistake that I did, because I don't want to lead you down the wrong path as well. But you can see there's a load of sand on top of the aggregate here, which obviously makes the ground higher, and I laid my patio on top of a full mortar bed, about 14 slabs here. But after five hours of work and getting towards the end and feeling proud of myself, I decided to test the garage door. And to my surprise, the left side opened outwards, but the right opened inwards. So my lesson is, don't ever assume. Always check these things. It is a door that I've probably only used once or twice ever in its lifetime. But because I want to turn the garage into a workshop, I had to ask myself, did I want to live with it like this? Did I want to chop a bit off the bottom of the door? But basically I wanted to be able to open it to be able to get a table saw and things like that in just in case down the line. My father-in-law also told me about some rising hinges but my dad said it wouldn't work in this situation and my patio was about an inch too tall. So the next morning before it had set properly I decided to rip most of it up. I wanted to be able to get full use out of my garage and make sure I did the job right. So I removed all but three of the slabs and using a bolster and a hammer I chipped off all the mortar off the back. And for the next two days, I had to remove any excess sand and aggregate on top, pull back the weed control, and remove a further two inches underneath. But we were still left with about 100 mil sub base. And once I'd got it to where I wanted it, I'd lay back down the weed control, and then it was a bit like musical aggregate. I'd layer it on top, then I could work on another section, and just compress it down with my tamper. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm not using a whacker. I have done in my other projects, and it was just because it was a small area. It's hardly going to get used. We're just really going to be storing our trailer there. But I went over with it about two or three times. And then one of the most important parts, I think, of doing a patio is a dry lay. Just to get a feel for any cuts that you need to do. And in my case, check to see if the door opened fine. So now on to mixing the mortar. I'm cheating here, I've still got two bags spare of the pre-mix mortar that you still have to mix yourself, but it was about three quid a bag. But once I run out of this, I will be mixing my own sand and cement, which is much cheaper. And just like my other videos, I'm mixing it all together while it's dry in my wheelbarrow with a shovel. And then I'd create a well in the middle and pour some water in a bit at a time. And then I'd just dollop on a full bed of mortar and normally I would have laid a slab on the right hand side but I just felt it was safer to start on the left while it was closer to the door. And then place my first patio slab there and using a spirit level and a mallet I wanted to make sure it was all going in the same direction as my other slabs which I find dictate where the rest go but also making sure that it sloped down towards me a bit. And then followed suit with the slabs next to it but I knew that if I was too far away from the wall I could just shimmy it along because it's not set at the minute. I'd also use it as a spacer going between my slabs and just repeated that same laying process again. But what was really useful having a long spirit level or you could use a long straight piece of wood, I was able to lay it flat on the slabs and see if there were any dips which I didn't want. So I'd lift that original row, pack some more mortar underneath and then malleted it down to make sure it was perfectly in line with my spirit level. 
And once those first two rows were done, and I knew that the door was opening fine, the rest just felt easy peasy. And I just kept going, and going, and going. And once I got close towards the end, I still wanted to have a pea gravel border there, which is great for drainage. I already had some slabs that I'd cut down using an angle grinder, which I'd done in my raised step video. So I'll leave a link to that video below, and then fix those last ones into place with mortar. And then after leaving that to set for about 24 hours, I was extremely happy that I could open my door. My fiance just laid the pea gravel in front of the garage door. Then it was time to think about filling in the gaps. And for my raised step video to point to them, I used a sand and cement mix. But while laying the rest of the patio back in August, I just used silver sand, which is more permeable. And I thought it was best to go with that because it would match overall. And you'll need to keep topping it up every now and again. But it's as easy as sweeping it in with a sweeping brush. So it's completely up to you of which way you want to do it. So finally I can say it's completely done and I can move on to other things because I don't want to just do patios forever. But uh, if you do anything differently, feel free to comment below. Hopefully it will help others doing their research. And if you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully you're all having a fantastic Easter and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.